Welcome to another episode of Red Watch TV. Today we're delving into the intriguing and controversial life of Vladimir Solovyev, one of the Kremlin's most influential voices and a significant player in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. In a nation known for its closely managed media environment, Solovyev stands out as one of President Vladimir Putin's staunchest defenders. He has been instrumental in framing Russia's aggression against Ukraine, turning it into a narrative of holy war. Русский рожден для выполнения своего долга. Сколько веков существует Россия, столько веков она борется со злом. Смерти нет. Есть дорога в бессмертие. From his prolific television broadcasts to his fiery rhetoric, Solovyev's role as a state propagandist is unparalleled, making him one of the key figures in the ongoing geopolitical drama. Stay tuned as we unravel the many facets of Solovyev's life, his rise as a propagandist, and his role in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Vladimir Solovyev was born into a Jewish family in Moscow on the 20th of October, 1963. His father, Rudolf Naumovich Solovyev, was a teacher of political economy and a boxing champion of Moscow. His mother, Inna Solomonovna Solovyeva, worked as an art critic at the Battle of Borodino Museum. Solovyov's parents met when they were students of the Moscow Pedagogical Institute. They separated when Vladimir was four years old, but continued to maintain friendly relations. His initial entrance into the world of journalism was on the airwaves of Russian radio. His early career saw him honing his skills as a presenter and reporter, showcasing an uncanny knack for spinning narratives that would later serve him well in his eventual role as one of Russia's leading propagandists. Solovyev's rise within the Russian media was both rapid and deliberate. His talent for captivating audiences with his eloquence and charismatic presence did not go unnoticed by those in power. Yet, it was not merely his natural charisma that caught the attention of the higher-ups. His dedication to conveying the narratives that the Kremlin wished to project onto the domestic and international stages proved instrumental in propelling his career forwards. In the tightly controlled media world of Russia, the government's influence is palpable, and diverging from the state narrative can have severe consequences. Yet Solovyev never strayed. His unwavering support of Kremlin policies, no matter how controversial or damaging, have consistently underscored his broadcasts. Moreover, his dogged defence and endorsement of President Putin have earned him an influential place within the corridors of Russian power. As the years have rolled on, Solovyev's voice has become one of the most recognised across the nation, his capacity to propagate narratives that align with Russia's interests, irrespective of the international repercussions, has made him a powerful tool in the Kremlin's arsenal. He has stood steadfast on the front lines of the information war, shaping public opinion according to the whims of the Kremlin. Vladimir Solovyev's status as a high-profile figure in Russian society has not only seen him rubbing shoulders with powerful political figures, but also sharing stages with individuals who would later become significant opponents. A prime example of this is the remarkable, yet perhaps somewhat bizarre, event that unfolded at a New Year's Eve party back in 2013. As millions of Russians bid farewell to 2012 and welcomed the New Year, the scene on one of the nation's most watched television broadcasts presented a spectacle that would be scarcely imaginable only a few years later. There, on the grand stage, was none other than Vladimir Solovyev, not behind a news desk or microphone, but dancing like John Travolta. But what truly made this a moment for the history books was the man who shared the stage with him, Volodymyr Zelensky. At the time, Zelensky was a renowned comedian, not the political leader who would eventually take up the mantle as Ukraine's president and stand firm against Russian aggression. This surreal moment, in retrospect, serves as a stark reminder of the twists and turns that life can bring. 
The television propagandist sharing a moment of joy with a man who would later become a beacon of resistance against the narrative that Solovyev so doggedly defends. Today, as Russia and Ukraine are locked in a conflict that's redefining the world order, the memory of that New Year's Eve provides a stark contrast. The laughter and light-heartedness of that moment have been replaced by the grim realities of war, and the two men who once shared a stage in jest now stand on opposite sides of a deeply entrenched divide. In a shocking twist, Solovyev, the self-proclaimed crusader of Russian truth, reported surviving an assassination attempt in 2018. The details surrounding the incident, however, are as murky and controversial as the man himself. He claimed that he was poisoned while on a trip in the Greek island of Corfu, and only due to a sudden decision to seek medical help did he evade death. The poison? An undisclosed toxin allegedly put into his food. Skeptics have questioned the validity of Solovyev's claims. Some point to his lack of tangible evidence, such as hospital records, while others suggest that the incident was an elaborate ruse to attract sympathy and deflect from the controversies surrounding his propagandist activities. Regardless of the truth, the incident did little to tarnish Solovyev's influence. If anything, it further entrenched his narrative as the embattled warrior for Russia's cause, standing against invisible enemies at home and abroad, in April 2022, Russia's FSB spy agency allegedly foiled another assassination attempt on Solovyev. According to sources, a group identified as the Ukrainian Radical Nationalist Organization, the Right Sector, claimed responsibility for the attempt. They alleged that Solovyev's promotion of Russian propaganda and harmful misinformation regarding the war in Ukraine was the primary motive behind their actions. Now, What's particularly intriguing about this event is the peculiar evidence that surfaced following the incident. Photographs emerged showing a table littered with items purportedly belonging to the would-be assassins. Among these objects were a swastika t-shirt, a gun, a map with Solovyev's route outlined and, of all things, several copies of the video game, The Sims. The presence of this game in such a grim scenario sparked an array of conjecture and analysis, Many speculated that the games had been acquired in error by the FSB agents in charge of orchestrating the fake scene. Many journalists and observers suggested that the original intention had been to display several SIM cards from mobile phones belonging to the would-be assassins. Others deemed it as a bizarre coincidence, suggesting it was a personal indulgence of the attackers that had no direct link to their planned act. The failed assassination attempt and its strange circumstances added another layer to the enigma of Vladimir Solovyev, fueling even more controversy around his life and the importance of his roles as a mouthpiece for the Russian state. Europe wasn't indifferent to Solovyov's activities. His Italian retreats became a battleground for those opposing his inflammatory rhetoric. Nestled on the idyllic banks of Lake Como, two of Solovyov's villas, worth an estimated 8 million euros, bore the brunt of the outrage against him. In a brazen dawn arson attack, Unidentified assailants set one of the villas ablaze. Firefighters were quick to respond, and the damage was not significant. Still, the message was clear. The villa, confiscated by Italian officials due to sanctions, still belonged to Solovyov and was undergoing renovations funded by COVID-19 bonus payouts for construction projects when the fire was set. The arsonists, according to firefighters, likely tossed burning tyres over the villa wall, transforming Solovyov's sanctuary into a flaming symbol of defiance. But the night of retribution was not over. Police discovered that another villa owned by Solovyov had been vandalised. The word war and killer were daubed in red paint, a glaring indictment of Solovyov's role in the war. The swimming pool, once a symbol of luxury, was dyed red, a grim reminder of the blood spilled in the conflict that Solovyov championed. As CCTV footage is scrutinised to identify the perpetrators, one thing remains clear. The backlash against Solovyov is not limited to verbal or written denunciations. Those opposing his stance have taken the fight to his doorstep, literally. As the war waged on, Solovyov took to the airwaves to amplify the Kremlin's narrative, continually escalating the rhetoric and making a name for himself as a prominent anti-Western figure. One country in particular drew his ire, the United Kingdom. Admiral Tony Radakin. Кого-то admiral. Где-то что добился. Еще они нам будут что-то рассказывать. Тоже мне. Страна одного сармата. Цитирую Дмитрий Олегович Рогозин. Ну, не одного все-таки. Одного. Побольше потребуется. Ну, за... нет, Шотландию побольше. мы трогать не будем. Шотландия будет свободна. А Уэльс, да? 
А Уэльс пока молчит. Ну и Уэльс будет свободный. И по требованию Байдена Северная Ирландия объединится с Ирландией. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Соловьев's threats against the UK have escalated in severity since the onset of the Russian invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. His broadcasts, characterized by impassioned monologues and heated panel discussions, have become ever more hawkish. The host has even threatened Ukraine's Western allies with nuclear warfare, making a notorious declaration that London will turn to dust and burn in hell. He has also called on Putin to plunge Ukraine into the Dark Ages. These comments and threats have intensified following Moscow's recent harsh missile and drone attack on Kiev, which was in response to a meeting between Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak to procure more weaponry for Ukraine. Solovyov has gone so far as to call for the destruction of British military structures outside the UK and to arm Russian partisans with advanced weapons that could potentially inflict significant damage on these facilities. A fellow pundit, Vladimir Rogov, who supports pro-Russians living in invaded Ukraine, even suggested that the remaining combat wing of the Irish Republican Army could be armed to attack prominent UK locations, such as Buckingham Palace and 10 Downing Street, Solovyov, supported this notion, implying that it would serve to grant the Irish self-determination and damage British institutions. Solovyov also made suggestions that these actions would lead to Scotland gaining independence. These extreme views and hostile statements, especially the call for a missile strike against British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, have caused international consternation. Solovyov's influence as one of Putin's most recognizable and vocal supporters in mainstream media cannot be underestimated. However, his unabashed calls for violence and warfare against the UK underscore the escalating tensions and dire situation resulting from the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. In a further twist of events, Solovyov, who so vehemently berates the West, was revealed to have a secret connection to the United States. The UK newspaper The Telegraph crediting the work of the Anti-Corruption Foundation, led by jailed opposition leader Alexei Navalny, reported that Solovyov fathered twin daughters in the US in 2017. This revelation came after an affair with Russian basketball player Svetlana Abrosimova. It was discovered that Solovyov made multiple trips to the US to visit his secret family. The twins, who hold US citizenship, were born after Abrosimova, and Solovyov made a trip to the US in 2016. The girls, who have the middle names Vladimirovna, translating as daughter of Vladimir, have since moved back to Russia to live in a $6.2 million home in Sochi. Their existence became public knowledge when Abrosimova and Solovyov put down matching addresses on a COVID-19 test in 2021. This startling revelation, given Solovyov's vehemently anti-Western stance, paints a picture of a man living a contradictory life, defending a regime and ideology on one hand and benefiting from the very system he vilifies on the other. It raises important questions about the propagandist's authenticity and the real motivations behind his aggressive rhetoric. As we conclude our examination of Vladimir Solovyov, we see a man who has wielded significant influence over the Russian media. His close alignment with the Kremlin's policies has proven to be lucrative for him, allowing him a lavish lifestyle that includes multiple villas in Italy and a multi-million dollar home in Sochi. Simultaneously, his role as Putin's dependable mouthpiece has driven him to make threats against the West and endorse Russia's conflict with Ukraine as a holy war. His virulent anti-Western rhetoric starkly contrasts with the revelations of his secret American family and his luxury Italian properties. This question, along with the attempted assassination against him and the vandalism of his properties, reflect the high stakes and the dangers that come with being a prominent voice within the Kremlin's machinery of propaganda. Solovyov's story, while unique, is ultimately a tale about the dangerous dance between power, influence, ideology and personal ambition. We thank you for joining us on this exploration of the life and influence of Vladimir Solovyov. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more content. And as we sign off, we leave you with a question for the comments section. Given all that we've discussed, what are your thoughts on the role of individuals like Solovyov in shaping public perception during times of conflict? We look forward to reading your thoughts and insights. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Red Watch TV. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below, and we look forward to seeing you next time.